Hi, thanks for joining us. My name is Ronald, and with my co-host, podcast partner in crime and many other things, Gaurav, we are going to be talking to a very special guest today. Live from Dubai, our dear friend. Where are you, Sakar? Where are you today? I'm actually You're speaking here. live from the Dubai Future Foundation. And thank you so much for having me, guys. Tell us, tell the audience, I'm sure everyone knows you, but tell the audience who you are and what you do. Well, my name is Slekar Erikat, and uh, I have the pleasure of co-founding a company called Crypto Oasis. As Crypto Oasis, we're doing our role in building what is the fastest growing ecosystem in the world today by numbers. 1,800 companies in this space, more than 8,000 people working in this space. I'm a Palestinian, born and raised in Germany, started my life as a consultant, lived in nine countries over the last probably 11, 12 years and worked in 23 of them. Um, and, you know, after spending probably a decade of, uh, of my life, uh, similar to, to what you do today, Ronit, on a plane, uh, I went from traveling twice to the four times a week to traveling twice to four times in a year now, because I'm married and I have children now, so I'm enjoying that part of life right now. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Crypto Oasis, um, what is Crypto Oasis? Well, first of all, you say Crypto Oasis and you say whoop, whoop, you know, you have to oh, uh, take it up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Okay, go on. You can do it better. <laughs> What is Crypto Oasis? Me neither. We, I just came up with that. You know, sounds like a cool thing to do. But no, in all seriousness, uh, Crypto Oasis is um, what we endearingly call this ecosystem, right? Um, mm -hmm. Our company is an actual called Crypto Oasis. We have a venture building arm called Crypto Oasis Ventures and multiple ventures underneath that, like Crypto Oasis Labs, where we support companies to land here in the UAE, like Crypto Oasis Centio, where we invest here in the UAE, and the list goes on and on. Um, Crypto Oasis is the, the term that we envisage people using in the future and today are already actively using when they refer to the Middle East and North Africa's crypto ecosystem, right? And crypto in this case is not cryptocurrency, but cryptography, which is really the foundation of everything that we know in relation to blockchain, cryptocurrencies, distributed ledger technologies. They all, NFTs, metaverse, call it what you may, they all use a form of cryptocurrencies. The reason we called it that is because we were tired of calling it the Silicon Valley of the Middle East or the Crypto Valley of the Middle East. And we could see a migration of people from all around the world to this region over here. So when you say this region, so Crypto Oasis, the metaphorical oasis, isn't just this wonderful city of Dubai or the Emirate of Dubai. It's UAE, it's the GCC, it's me. What is, how, how big is this virtual oasis that we're talking about? So it it's, it's, stop, otherwise it becomes the whole world, right? The galaxy. Right. Of us. So we, we called it out as being Middle East and North Africa, right? Okay. Um, starting in, in North Africa, going all the way back to mm -hmm. Levant. Reason for that is that we believe this this region has some of the most unique elements. Um, mm -hmm. the start and, and at front and center, the the talented individuals living over here, right? And mm -hmm. us having the youngest population on average, probably in the in the entire world, right? With World Economic Forum data coming out, suggesting more than 50% of the future workforce will, or the existing workforce will be ha will have to be retrained. We believe mm -hmm. with us already having a young population, uh, a mostly digitally native population, we already have mm -hmm. one forward. Now, Dubai is at the heart of this, right? Uh, the UAE overall is at the heart of this. With Dubai leading the way, they were as early as 2016 with announcing their intention to be one of the most significant blockchain ecosystems in the world. In 2021, we, we were able to come out at the future, um, at the World Economic Forum, um, sorry, it was 2022. We came out at the future economic uh, World Economic Forum, uh, stating that it's a thousand companies in the ecosystem. Since then, we've recently just released a report. It's a thousand eight hundred companies in the ecosystem, and that ecosystem specifically, we we focus here on the UAE. And with that, the majority of these 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 companies in this space, the projects and startups in this space are in Dubai, but by no means is Dubai, let's say, the only element to this, because mm. while Dubai provides this 
hotbed where everyone can come and, and collaborate. And similarly, Abu Dhabi does as well. Abu Dhabi then provides the institutional support for companies to scale. 1,800 companies, 1,800 companies today, 1,000 companies a year ago. Yeah. Some is organic growth, some is better measurement. What's driven this growth? And what was that number pre-COVID? So did you have a number pre-COVID, like 2019? We, or? we only started counting. We only started counting, I think, 2021 20, onwards, right? right. Um, having said that... Uh, you have to guesstimate, guesstimate. Go on. Here's your chance to do some... What would it have been in 2019? So here, let's go through the cycles, right? Because there were some some important cycles that 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 drove the numbers, right? And I think they would be higher at some point and lower at another. Mm. So the first cycle was driven by the announcement, 2016. His Highness Sheikh Hamdan came out and said, you know, we want to be a blockchain-powered government, and we want to have, and you know, I keep it on my Twitter until today. Mm. Um, we want to have a thousand companies in this ecosystem. We want to create an ecosystem and we want to have a thousand companies. With and that, when, that? Iconic and building, he, when and why did he say that? It was in 2006, October 2016, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, we were engaged with, um, with the Dubai government much earlier, but until it was formalized and put into a strategy, it, it took some time. And, and with that, the UAE were, uh, were the first government in the world to, to implement a and a national or nation state mm. blockchain strategy, right? So and with that, the again, the Global Blockchain Council, wasn't it, Sucker, if I'm not mistaken? That was, that, the Global Blockchain Council was a result of this, right? Got it. So, so Got the, it. yeah, the announcements came first, Global Blockchain Council came then, and with that, the UAE turned into, into a hotspot for blockchain at the time. And, and, you know, I met, uh, met uh, I think, Gaurav uh, probably around that time for the first time. Um, and, because, and here in this, this iconic location that I'm in, the Dubai Future Foundation, they started the first accelerator towards this as well, supporting local businesses, or not just local businesses, supporting businesses to, to arrive here, right? Providing the, the paperless initiative also to get businesses to for the government to consume as well, not just accelerate, or am yeah, I misnaming so, as well, sucker? Yeah, so that was a, a key part of the strategy. How do we become paperless, right? Right. And and it was measured at the time. How many papers will we save? How many kilometers will we save driving back and forth? Right. Um. So so a couple of things came together, and with that. You, and then the Future Blockchain Council had its first instance, uh, sorry, the Future Blockchain Summit, which was from the DWTC, and they had the first, um, the first blockchain, publicly announced blockchain competition of its kind, right? Now with that, startups saw that there's an opportunity here in the UAE, you know, companies like Consensus, um, which was an Ethereum-based consultant, one of the co-founders of Ethereum essentially set us up um, and, and partnered here. And, and the company that I was working with at the time was then, um, was then announced as being one of the companies that is driving this entire agenda. At that point, it feels like there were somewhere around 100 to 200 companies in this space. If I'd have to, and this is purely guesstimate, sure. right? Just because you're 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 pushing for that, um, uh, Ronan, right? These are pure guesstimates. Um, now it's an informed, it's an informed guesstimate, right? Because you told yeah. us a few minutes ago that you're, you know, you're one of the co-heads of the crypto oasis, you know, the kind of <laughs> people who make it all happen in Dubai. So I, I can, I can know. I can do verification on that, Ronan, because I was there at the time, so I can say he's yeah. he's right, he's right. <laughs> Is that a real time fact check we just did? Yes, there you go. Yeah. The real time yeah. fact check, a re a true fact right there. True um, fact. The true, a true fact. fact. So, um, so twenty so a couple of hundred would have been what, 2017 or 2019? No, so that's so I'm coming to 19. I mean now I'm oh, okay. we're, we're building up. We're building up. 19. 19. So we're keeping this correlated with cryptocurrency prices as well. 18 was the time when you know Bitcoin went through uh, not much to twenty thousand dollars, right? Um, and then at the end of 18, this was um, sorry, the end of 17. 17. All yeah. of this came to the pinnacle and started tumbling. 20, 2018, right? With that, a lot of startups, because you know, startups at the time 
that would have you know collected funding during something called the ICO, their initial point offering, mm -hmm. would have at the majority of it was based on Ethereum at the time, and Ethereum also had a had a fantastic rally from a couple of dollars to um, I'm not sure if we reached a thousand, but essentially it was nothing, and then it was worth something. So a lot of these startups found themselves sitting on a large treasury. Now, there are successful startups in the space that then use that treasury, converted it to actual fiat currency, dollar, mm -hmm. dirham, pound, euro, yen, whatever, um, and, and then survived this. Given that the majority of startups were first-time founders, you know, just dabbling in the space, they would have left all of this in their cryptocurrency and then lost out massively on this, right? With that came a thrust of uh, of uh, what what Gartner called this thrust of disillusion, um, and that was all out through eighteen, and and then also leading into into nineteen. Nineteen then with I think and I, I do believe there was it was a perfect storm, right? Esca was on one side announcing so the Emirates Security Exchange Authority started governing and and defining um, uh, uh, defining licenses for this space. Entities like the Dubai Multi Commodities Center signed an agreement with us in 2020 at the World Economic Forum to set up the first, uh, DM, what was at the time called the DMCC Crypto Center, um, right? The first physical location of its kind. And obviously predating that are, are people like Dr. Marwan, who, who's announced the Dubai Blockchain Center and, and was an active advocate for Dubai being a great place to come to if you're a blockchain startup. Now, fast forward this into, uh, into, into 2020. 2020, the entire world went through lockdown. We had a very harsh lockdown here in Dubai. I think this is what people tend to forget when they say, hey, but Dubai was open, that the entire population complied with because you know we're, we're good citizens over here and we trust the government. And then ended up as early as the October 2020, having these large conferences like JITEX and the Future Blockchain Summit. With that, smart blockchain talent started flocking more and more. So from one side, it was driven by you know, the, the, the free zones, the ESCA, um, ADGM had some announcements at the time, DOC had some announcements at the time, um, this open for business attitude that you had here in the mm. UAE, and suddenly it seemed like everyone came to the UAE, right? And at that time, I'm very confident that it went from probably nothing to a thousand, you know, that that is a real growth, right? Now, mm. since then, until now, I could I could make the argument that we count right, that we look in every yeah. corner. Some of it might be completely organic incepted in let's say the last six months. And there's a there's a high uh, number around this. I can put the, my finger on the exact number. Um, but but also there was a huge push at the time from companies from all around the world coming to the UAE. And then they only accelerated that. Then the Dubai Metaverse strategy came out, the Emirates blockchain strategy was announced. Um, you know, the regulations around, you know, uh, ADGM started giving out the first licenses for licensed entities like exchanges. Uh, later on, VARA was announced. So everything started really accelerating hardcore supporting the space. Sorry for the long-winded answer, but, you know, people think often that this just happened. Yes. This is 10 years in the making, right? It's, it's one of those overnight success stories, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's exactly. an overnight success. So people from yeah. the outside are like, oh, just happened overnight, right? COVID happened and Dubai was, in the words of a very well-known crypto founder who lives here, Dubai became lifestyle as a service. It just happened overnight. Right, right. right. Yeah, it was, but actually, and, and, and there's, it wasn't just there's layers stuff. and layers of work that's taking place underneath yeah. that. Yeah, you know, in summary, Abu Dhabi we, with ADGM and the rules, and here in Dubai. Yeah, in in summary, what we call it is 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 talent, capital, and infrastructure. And I'm sure you, mm. you're tired of hearing me yeah. saying this, but it really boils down to these three elements: it's the infrastructure on the base layer, which is let's say the lifestyle as a service, mm. the great the ports, you know, the, the ability with Emirates or Etihad to travel to anywhere around the world with a mm. direct flight. It then is the digital infrastructure, but most importantly, probably the regulatory infrastructure. Then mm. is capital, and the UAE has always been known for capital, but that capital now wants mm. to stay here in the UAE. Yes. The conversation has changed a lot from how can we diversify outside to how can we diversify inwards. 
And now with that UAE being a safe haven, more millionaires have arrived here than ever before. More companies were incepted overall than ever before. Um, more hedge funds were incepted more than ever before, right? So capital started moving also into the UAE, but probably back to this point that I mentioned earlier, talent is where I see really a, a, a major unique selling point um, because your talent pool in the UAE, as you know, many of the listeners will know, but if you don't, in the UAE, it's as easy to hire someone from Bolivia as it is to hire someone from Australia, as it is to hire someone from India, right? Ta your talent pool really is the entire world. And on top of that, you have a very highly educated local population and local meaning the Middle East and North Africa, plus all of the immigrants that, you know, I'm an immigrant into the UAE um, mm. that are here, that are, are pushing, pushing for this agenda forward. Yeah, no, we have um, immigrants who've been here a long time, including yeah. likes of Mr. Bahar, who are basically made in the UAE. Uh, oh, Garb, you're born here? Yep, family's basically, been here since the start. Since my born brought up, our uh, honorary, uh, honorary Emirati friend, uh, <laughs> made in the UAE. Um, can I just pick you up on maybe one or two additional questions related sure. to what you just said and then hand over sure. to Garland and we'll grill you more. But um, that point on talent, I sort of focus in on the talent because places that become crypto hubs um, or tech hubs more loosely, let's call it more broadly, tech hubs, there's normally a concentration in the area, in the kind of, like the, the classic one is the Bay Area, right? Um, there are others obviously in China, the golden triangle around London, um, but the Bay Area, you have, you have Stanford, you have Ber Berkeley, Berkeley, you've got Sand Hill Road, you've got all the big tech companies now, you've got everything, right? Okay, the airport and the airlines are not as good as we have here, but you have this amazing kind of, uh, you have this amazing concentration of big tech, big universities, um, and just a concentration of like the world's best talent, tech talent. When people look at this part of this corner of the world where we, the three of us live, they go, well, what do you have? And you made this really interesting point that actually the talent pool is global, as in you can get a visa here in a way that's much harder today to go to the US or to even to go to Europe. Um, so the talent pool here are kind of hypothetical target market of origin source market is the whole world. How does that work though, Sakura? For people who don't know Dubai, or don't know the UAE, you don't have a business here, we don't live here, we've not worked here. Just explain how that works at Tech Talent. Does it, um, is it like, if I'm a really smart kid in, I don't know, in Bogota or in Guangzhou or in Hyderabad, I can come here and get a job. And do these really smart tech kids want to come here? Because, you know, two, three years ago, if you were a techie, let alone blockchain. Can I say this would be the one of the last places you'd want to come and work if you're a really, really smart techie? Again, it's one of those overnight successes, and I'm not too sure what this will do to your production, but I'm going to switch the camera, right, because it's making the point for me right now. Um, and what you see over here is essentially the UAE uh, being part of the World Economic Forum. I'm not too sure if you can see that, right? But this essentially mm -hmm. is the center of the fourth industrial revolution. How do I switch this back here, right? And with that, and, and I had the privilege to, to work closely with the government. So um, in, in multiple different layers, right? If it was for, for uh, suggesting emerging technologies such as blockchain very early on, or later on with um, the prime minister's office to define how this, um, this works together and how you can interact with government um, uh, using technology. The UAE's quickly realized that as a government and um, through tech, they'll be able to differentiate themselves. And this started as early as the 2000s when they announced an e-government, which then became an M government, which then became a smart, uh, a M being the mobile government, which then became a smart government, right? And then they were, they were some of these, the first countries to adopt on national level, these 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 uh, these uh, technologies. With that, to your point, they've developed themselves as somewhat of a tech hub. Now, now switching gears, 
another thing that they've identified is the talent of the future is maybe not necessarily here locally. And they started taking active steps towards this. So today you're a smart kid in Bogota. You studied STEM. You have a PhD in something of, of sort. Come apply for a golden visa, right? Come actually start um, interacting with, with the UAE because you know what? We want you here is what the UAE government came out of. And, you know, again, um, for, for anyone that doesn't know, before that, it's near impossible. Well, not near impossible. It was, so I, I've been in the UAE since 2008. And every three years, I have to renew my visa and my employer needs to submit the documents and so forth. Later on, you are then able, and, and I'm very blessed to be, be one of the first recipients of this. Um, you are able to get the golden visa, which is 10 years into the future. And what's even more impressive is that this 10 years doesn't just apply to me, it applies to my wife, it applies to my children, right? They want to ensure that they can keep tech talent here. So, you know what, let me not disagree with you that it wouldn't have been the first place to think about. But what I can say from behind the scenes is the right steps were, were taken. So mm. the fate of the workforce in the UAE changed drastically as yeah. a result of this, right? I wouldn't point out the UAE as being a developer hub a year or two years ago. Today, mm. I will make a strong argument um, driven by government initiatives, by public sector initiatives, by private sector initiatives, um, how slowly but surely mm. the UAE has become somewhat of a development hub. Are we where Silicon Valley is yet? No. But you know what? Also, we, we still have a long way to go. I really believe, I mean, and it's, not, it's, it's a catchy sentence, but I do believe the American dream has moved out of America and moved to the UAE, right? What you would achieve, what you were able to achieve in, mm. in the US in the 80s, the 70s, yeah. 80s, and 90s, you today can achieve in, in the UAE. Mm. And the entire ecosystem around you, and I don't mean the blockchain ecosystem or the crypto ecosystem, I mean the entire ecosystem that governments are, are creating initiatives for you to, um, to, to, support, uh, to, to support you to be successful. No, I, I absolutely agree with this, the narrative you laid out there. I think right now, right here, this last 12, 18 months, we're living that transition period, which makes it so exciting. Um, I, I arrived here way later than Gaurav did because he was born here. Uh, I came here in 2017 and okay. no way and dot, dot, dot. Could we even have pretended this was a, a crypto hub or a tech hub or, a, you know, talent was limited in those spaces in the so-called new economy. And the transformation, starting initially with maybe the capital and the, um, the founders and now the rest of the teams turning up. The transformation is amazing. And on that note, I want to segue, uh, bring Mr. Dhar into the conversation and let him let him take over. Take over. Thank you so much, uh, Ron at the sucker. Thanks so much again for, for having, you know, being here, sharing Pleasure. with us your, your knowledge, insights, the history, you know, which I think is actually a very important piece for people to understand who are listening to this, this, this podcast, because it serves to be a platform of knowledge which people can get from trusted sources that aren't generally reports, but humans and people talking about, you know, what's actually happening in ecosystem, not just the UA, but ecosystems in, in Web3, FinTech, or from a founder's perspective. And I think the story you've been sharing with us today talks about how an evolution can take place at the earliest stage backed by visionary leadership that really enables it to happen. It could have just as well have not happened, not materialized, failed and fallen flat on its face, but not for the infrastructure set up and capacity of enablement from the leadership of the government in this, in this country, right? I think if, if any of these initiatives had failed, it was because it would fail on a world stage. I don't think it would have failed because the UAE or Dubai or Abu Dhabi yeah, had failed yeah, to provide the right platform or, or conduits to happen, right? So that's what's been super interesting. And, you know, go, going back to conversations we've been talking about from how the ecosystem has evolved, the explosion that's happening, the confidence people have to, to come here from a lifestyle perspective or even from a regulation perspective, 
I think one thing we didn't talk about was the number of developers. I remember when, when that global blockchain council was set up we and consensus came here. I think the number of developers, blockchain developers in 2015, 2016 was under 10,000 globally. If, if I remember correctly, Sarkar, do you have that figure? Do you remember that number? What it was? I can share that. As far as I know today, Ethereum, which was hailed as the development, um, you know, the, the number of developers are the most in Ethereum. They're somewhere around, um, I don't know if it's, it's 15,000 or 15 million, whatever the number is, is, is benign. Uh, regardless, don't hold me to the exact number. Right, right. It's such an ultra small number. And that just right. talks towards the, how nascent this entire space is. And it was unbelievable because I remember that was the joke that used to be, we used to talk about blockchain right in the beginning, you know, before people started taking it seriously, putting use cases to it, giving it the chance, you know, people were like, okay, great. I want to do a massive infrastructure project, but who's going to develop it? <laughs> and even if I need a developer to do it, who's going to, who's going to train those people. Right. And I think that conversation has become moot now to a degree, because I think, the self-learning that developers can do for different chains, protocols, systems is 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 vast. So, do do you know how much it is today? How many blockchain developers there are out there today, globally? I I, I wouldn't be able to give you an exact number, um. But I looked at it the other day, and and I looked at it in context also of overall developers, and um. I want to say I want to say that there's somewhere around 200 million developers out there or 20 million developers. Again, let me not quote numbers without knowing them. But what I can say is that the proportion of blockchain related developers is, again, very small. It is right. right? A lot of people refer to the space and or look at Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin seems to be the indication for how much how far we've moved. Say, oh, it's at 30,000 right now. We've missed the train. Mind you. Um, not from an investment advice point of view, but this, this entire industry is so nascent. This entire crypto industry doesn't even represent 0.5% of the global markets today, huh. right? Um, and that just shows you how very, very early we, we are and how not out of the woods we are as well, right? Because this um, this can still, I mean, I'm, I'm super pro. I've, I've signed my name in blood next to all of this, right? I've, I've fallen in love with this as early as 2014, 15, when what really got me was that I couldn't understand the concept, right? And I, there was no education material out there or little to no education material towards blockchain out there. Anyhow, having, having gone, gone pretty much full circle, um, I'm, I'm now at the point where, where I tell people don't get bogged down by this notion that this had the train has passed the train ha is is still not even steaming up to get going right we're we're so when we look at 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 mass adoption you have these early adopters right and then there's a a, a, a little bit of a of a break and that's when the tipping point when it starts and by the way there's a great book by malcolm gladwell which is called the tipping point that talks and analyzes you know how how do ideas actually start scaling? And the only other technology that we can compare this or that I can compare this with is the internet. And believe it or not, when you actually plot the number of users on the internet and you plot the number of users that we have with, with crypto today, um, it, it's 1996 in internet terms, right? So imagine I could you know, go back to 1996 and tell you in a couple of uh, years, because really, 1996 is a couple of years ago, um, and, and, and I, you know the internet is going to be everywhere. We're going to have meetings online, and you know everyone's going to have the internet in its pocket. What are the things that you could start thinking about doing? And similarly, rather than thinking about you know the train has passed, no, think about how really blockchain here in the UAE, blockchain seems omnipresent, and crypto seems omnipresent. It's in the news, it's in the media. We hear about it all the time. Right. But really, we're so bleeding edge early. Right. That anyone listening to this and, you know, never have heard about having heard about this should go online and start educating yourself. You know, Princeton, Oxford, um, pretty true Harvard um, are all have these courses online and free on YouTube. You can go and consume them right now. Right. If you're thinking about investing, 
ten thousand dollars and let's say a a, 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 a a big university program don't you know figure it out go on coursera or go on edX and pay fifty dollars or a hundred dollars or even nothing to get these insights because I really do believe that and and back circling back to developers that just shows you know if, if we don't have again I'm sorry I don't have the number but it's just a small number in comparison to the wider development community meaning that really this this is still at at the beginning of the beginning I think you know it's about 25,000 or so give or take a few thousand blockchain developers so it's oh, like wow. directionality was yeah. correct as in so then 15,000 the software is developers year. there are tens of thousands of monthly active blockchain developers um yeah you could put them into you could put them all into one little corner of the marina and yeah we'll have the rest of the marina yeah and imagine with all of this you some of those original email buildings you just stick them in there and then you have to <laughs> yeah exactly and imagine with all of this hype around there and and good that then my number isn't isn't too far off Fifteen thousand, i think is the ethereum development community and wow. that's being hailed as the biggest community out there. Come on, 15,000 people, guys. That's right? nothing. That's, yeah, that that's is nothing. That's a joke. Small. Yeah. Super small. I think there are more teenage Python developers globally. I'm going to be surprised. Yeah, be surprised. exactly. But anyways, you know, AI will do all of this soon for us. Ooh, so we don't next, next podcast, Ronit. Let's not, let's not muddy the work. No, no, no. But Saka, I want to put... I'm going to be going on AI. Oh, yeah. I want to put that's the next. That's the next one. I need to put my is the AI capital of the world. Yeah. UAI, UAI. It's gonna happen, but it's gonna happen yeah. out of another yeah. state. But I want to put my co-host hat on from a from a from a product and a business point of view, just a little bit if you if you allow me, please. Sure, is of course. when you started, when Crypto Oasis started, right? When Ronan touched on what does Crypto Oasis do, it seems like you do a lot. Um, but there must have been a clear path as to what you started as a step one two three as a product or a service that was something perhaps you did intentionally and then perhaps you did something in response to what you thought was needed or people asked you to do so could you walk us through that journey a little bit because what we like to do here on this podcast is 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 ideally let people understand that when you're starting a business product or service in this in, in anything to do with technology at any stage, there's an evolution that happens serendipitously and there's there's what happens planned, right? And essentially what I'd like you to do is kindly walk us through that if you don't mind in a sure. little bit more so we can understand what it offered, not, you know, and it's original sure stage and what it offers today. I'm not too sure if we're the best example for what happened serendipitously. Because we had a very clear... It is, your story is what it is. I'd just love to right, walk through. You know, right. But... So, so we had a very clear plan in mind when starting. And mind you, it changed, but, you know, and we, we pivoted left and right, but we, we, stuck to, we stuck to the main mission, which was building the fastest or the largest blockchain ecosystem in, in the world. And with that, obviously, we play our part. And, you know, people think, hey, Crypto Oasis has 1,800 companies. Mind you, I wish, right? Um, these are just, these are the companies in the ecosystem that, you know, we've, we've taken the role upon ourselves to actually count them, right? So in 2020, at the World Economic Forum, before the world went, you know, uh, down the drain, for lack of a better word, um, <laughs> we signed a partnership with, and, and even earlier, I mean, really this, I can trace this back to, to as early as 2014, 15, when I started engaging here with the government. And then on the other side, um, one of my partners in this, uh, Gaz Klobishnik, was at the same time forming the Crypto Valley Association over there. And we were already having our eyes at this right and 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 when we benchmarked against the world right and sorry just where is the crypto valley association was it switzerland was it the us where was that global sorry could you right start? thanks um so so this is this is uh, this was in Zug, switzerland at the time where this was announced and this was let's say the heart of the crypto valley but the wider uh, crypto valley includes you know Liechtenstein, includes uh luxembourg includes uh areas of germany right it's that 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 your quote unquote European ecosystem, which and this is your partner and co-founder. Yes, right. So so with that, he he learned a lot from there, and and when he when we arrived over here, we started thinking about how we can 
accelerate this. So the first thing we did was in partnership with the DMCC, we opened this uh, crypto center we had Brock Pierce with us at the time, who's you know one of the co-founders of uh, of of Tether, um, which today finally came out and said, "Hey, we actually have your money safe, and here's the gold, and here's the Bitcoin that we own." I was I was I was waiting for that, so uh, finally, um, and and we had had his uh, his Excellency Ahmed bin Slayim as as one of our, our our supporters in this, and we opened this crypto center, which was the first location, the first physical location in the UAE, obviously by the DMCC, um, to, to house startups in the space, right? You don't have to and, set and up the just for, Again, for our global audience, could you explain what the DMCC is, please? Yeah, it's a free zone within, within the UAE, specifically within Dubai. Um, it is the Dubai Multi Commodities Center. They've made a name for themselves as being a, a hotspot for physical gold trading, physical diamond trading. So um, uh, uh, don't hold me to the year. I think in 2018, it was the most amount of physical gold and physical diamonds traded anywhere in the world was at, at this, uh, this, this, this place called the Dubai Multi Commodities Center. They then went into other commodities such as coffee. So today they're one of the biggest coffee roasters in the world, collecting coffee from all around the world. And, and we were part of the team that was responsible for also bringing startups into the whole equation, correct? So I'm, I'm not sure if, if I can take credit for it or if we can take credit for startups. You were part of the capitalists. You might not have been solo, but you were part of it. Yeah, so we, we were the guys to, to help them open this space and then open for applications. And when we opened for applications, it was, it was ludicrous. I think we had a thousand something applications in the first week, right? Um, and, and started growing the space from there, all right? So that was, that was the logical first step to start support companies, you know, rather than, you know, for anyone that's listening from outside of Dubai, Dubai is a rather expensive place to set up a business. In Germany, I can set up my business online and 50 euros later, I have a business. Uh, locally in the UAE, generally the barrier for entry is, is, is rather high. But with that, the trend had started um, for shared co-work, for co-working spaces and the likes. And this was a co-working space dedicated for crypto blockchain companies, unregulated, mind you. Right, these were distributed ledger technology companies and proprietary trading uh, companies. Distributed ledger being anyone that works in the technology space. Proprietary trading is anyone that wants to invest his own money and do it under some form of governance structure. The logical next step that we took is to start invest into these um, these, and there we we brought together essentially a group of partners, friends, and family that believe in this space and started actively investing in this space so at the you same helped time them, you helped them set up the companies you did the company formation you did the kyc you did all of that for these companies as a service so we still do that as a service for all other free zones as well um so we work together with the dic we uh, we send companies towards adgm all the relevant uh free zones over here um so that's this is the, the initial revenue generation business service right. this, this was essentially hey let's set up this crypto center, let's fill up this crypto center. Within a year, we actually filled up the entire crypto center in partnership wow. with the DMCC. And the licensing entity was always the DMCC. So we were we were supporting, but the licenses were always issued by, by DMCC. So a year later, we, um, we handed back over operations to the DMCC team, um, who until now operate the DMCC crypto center. We're also, we're still tenants there. So, that was the first, the very first step. And from there also our, our insights started forming because we could see which companies are here, which companies are moving here, from which nationalities are they moving here and, and, and why are they moving here, right? And then not necessarily one came first and the other came second. We had our own ventures that we started pushing into the market, right? So we became uh, venture builders as, as, it, as one uh, could say. And, and, and today I'm very proud that we are actually um, receivers of the first license by the DFC for a venture studio, 
where we're going to focus on 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 Web three. Um, we're gearing up to, um, and and this is actually where I am today um, uh, with with the global studio uh, network. Uh, today we we are here, and uh, and sorry, I'm 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 waving because I'm, I actually walked out of the session and it was the last session um, to to work with studios from all around the world. And with that, we started building our own ventures locally. Wow! Um, congratulations. Thank you. That's, uh, thank you. that's a big piece of news. I don't think you should. We should take a second to pause here because I know. Uh, a dear friend of mine, Alper, is actually working with the DIFC on the Venture he's Studio the conference driving. that was taking place out here. He's a he's a very good friend, and he's launched his own venture studio and brought a few people in collaboration. But Ed, from a, this is the first time I've heard about a venture studio with a Web three component heavily uh, as you know uh, as the bedrock uh, underlying the thesis of of where they want to build and return. So that's wow, yeah. that's, that's a big step. I, I think you're going to have a lot of people inspired by that rushing in very soon. So congratulations. I, I hope so. Yes. And you know, it, I think it's a team <laughs> sport. So the more the merrier. And like Alper it. has been a driving force in this. I mean, um, Enhanced Ventures uh, and and Moro hosted us here in the in the Future Foundation in the Future Foundation, and obviously the Future Foundation hosted us here for the last couple of days um to to start you know flushing out what needs to be done and it's it's a huge step for us right because it's this 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 other element to the story we then also saw hey you know there's we are so i was born into this world a consultant for all intents and purposes um oh, we have, my ground. yeah yeah by my management consulting tech management consulting as my has been my background and essentially i left there and, and started uh, crypto oasis with my partners and 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 with that we saw that there's a there's a there's a bit of a, a gap in the market for management consulting capabilities in this space um so we have a consultancy backed by 250 consultants in uh, in in switzerland that we work um, where we engage with startups but also with with institutions alike right so banks uh, utilities government entities um and then and then um uh, uh we we also saw for example that one of our ventures for example is is working in the pr and communication space and 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 supporting companies that are arriving here to 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 be known in this space and works you know on on branding requirements and media requirements and pr requirements we then have a, a another one of the ventures that we brought here, which is in the tokenization world, right? Where we where we support companies in institutional tokenization, right? How how can I as a as an institution start adopting this? Because you know, doing this as a startup is very different than doing this as in the bounds of of an institution like, for example, City, right? So there. <laughs> and really, the list goes on and on, but I want to pause here to allow you guys to. Well, that's them. amazing. So, so essentially, what what I'm hearing is 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 crypto is is a one stop shop for anything related into the space from a setup perspective, a consulting perspective, fundraising perspective, venture studio perspective, and and you know, and on and on and on. So, I think you, I think it sounds like you've just been listening a lot, um, and you're trying to provide. What people want guidance on at different stages for for their business, which is crypto related, and you've really honed in on that. So, apart from you know trying to delve into that a bit deeper, uh, how big is the team now? How many? It sounds like you know when you start with your co-founder, and yeah. you're, you know you obviously have an army of consultants on standby. They're not on your payroll full time. I mean, God forbid. Um, but you know when you have that. How big is the team to run something like this today? That so, so today on site we have somewhere around um, twenty people here, twenty one people here in Dubai. Okay. So there's a co-founding team um, <laughs> that comes to, that came together, but also we enjoy a very large global network and and access into into um, a lot of talent within within the global network, and and um, we have two hundred and fifty. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> we have 250 probably as part of these um these the, these these consulting entities and then you know we're invested obviously into companies as well 
And I think every one of us is working a five man job, right? Because uh, for the past for the past 10 days, I was saying I, I haven't gotten home earlier than 10 a 10 uh, p.m. Uh, so so we give it our, our all. We just came out with this report, for example, that, you know, when I look at it um, and we, you know, we worked on it and it's it's just mind boggling how much data and information is in this report. It's 290 pages of content. Oh, wow. Um, oh, wow. Is yeah. it available for anyone to consume or? Yeah, go to cryptooasis.ae. Please go and download oh, it. Oh, wow. Wow. Maybe, wow. Yeah, of course. You'll be hitting the, you know, you'll be part of the next 10,000 people to download it. We haven't published the numbers just yet, but I'll give you a sneak peek. In the past oh. couple of days, there's more than 10,000 downloads of this report. Wow. Um, thousands of mentions of it because again it is these specific and 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 localized unique insights that don't come along with just collating content we went through these registers we went through the media announcements we asked our friends anyone we meet we include there and you know we we also came up with a directory and that is available on full scale for Crypto Oasis members. So, you know, we have a membership essentially where people become a part of it. Then that directory really lists all of these companies, right? So this isn't just a number that we publish. No, we actually publish also the details of all of these companies that are active in this space. That's fantastic. That's that's great work. I, you know, I really appreciate the, the, the people who, who do things like that for ecosystem navigation. It's, it's a very crude, crucial and critical part of, of, you know, making sure that people can find what they need to. So what's next for Crypto Oasis? I mean, you started it at, at point A, of course, you know. point B, C, D, E. Is, yes. is, is Crypto Oasis going to turn into a DAO? Is it, uh, are you going to launch it? No, no, no. Is there... <laughs> <laughs> what's the next evolution of, of Crypto Oasis, Saka? Tell us, I, yeah, I some ideas. I said it while you were speaking, but obviously, you know, it's world domination. There's no, uh, there's no other, other thing that we know, but in all seriousness, um, you know, we, I, we firmly believe that this is going to be the most significant place in the world when it comes to crypto and blockchain. I really believe that, right? I, and I, the, the good thing is I've been saying it since 2015 on the record. Um, and, and I really believe that we're just at the, you know, we're not even at this tipping point yet where this is going to scale to mass adoption. So um, we are now gearing up to to start new initiatives. For example, um, the Green Block. Um, the Green Block is an initiative we're starting in line with the direction of the UAE to host uh, COP28. Um, the Green Block will then put together relevant entities that are working in this space, right? So that's one of the next big initiatives that we're working with. We're growing our global collaborations. So Crypto Valley Association today in the Middle East, um, we represent that um, and, and are very proud of that. The Dubai Digital Asset Association, which is under the patronage of His Excellency uh, Omar al-Alama, the Minister of AI and the Future of Work, um, where, where we are building up working groups to advise relevant entities within the government, within the public sector on how to start adopting this. You know, there's, uh, mind you, my, my reaction to DAOs is rather, was rather hard and, and, and I'm yet to, I think principally or, or conceptually this idea of a DAO is beautiful. Practically, I'm yet to see it work somewhere properly where it's not governed by, let's say, who owns the majority of the token, which, you know, how decentralized is it if the guy with the most money controls it, right? Um, so so with that, that's why, just to justify why I said, so no, we won't be a DAO, right? Um, we, we um, so around the green block, that's going to be a big focus for us from now until the end of the year. And let's see how this, uh, this, this, this pans out because then we can start growing this further. Um, I don't think you'll see anything too freakishly new from us. We've just started and, you know, we've validated the business model with that. And you're going to see more of the same, pretty much more entities being created, more ventures being pushed out, more thought leadership, more unique insights that we publish, growing the, the community, growing the number of companies that we engage with. Um, and, and I really do think that we're just at the at the at the beginning of all of this. Well, you know, as as a as a person that that's been as part of tech delivery building across ecosystems for close to two, two decades now, particularly in this region, 
I'm I'm a big fan of seeing technology materialize in the hands of users and businesses. So, I mean, as an offline conversation, perhaps, or in the next podcast, it would be wonderful where we've touched upon the basis of origin of what has happened and what is happening from an ecosystem perspective. It would be wonderful to touch base with you, perhaps maybe on the eve of the release of your second report with regards to the adoption and, and use cases that are being adopted by consumers and businesses alike. And I'm personally very excited to see that. And, and obviously with all the work you're doing, it's on a fast track to happen. So I'd love to, to pick that up with you the next time we speak and, and congratulations on your journey so far. Uh, I wish you all the best, especially with the venture studio space. You, you, if you're at home at 10 o'clock at night, be prepared for the 2 a.m. mornings. I'm, I'm giving something <laughs> off a warning now. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be fantastic. But it's gonna take by a the way, time. I said it's the earliest I've gotten home, right? Ah, <laughs> so, so you know, as 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 one person that's hands dirty and in companies and doing things, I wish you all the best. It's a very thank exciting space, and, and thank you for joining us today. And with that, I'll hand back to Ronit, brother. Maybe just a couple of uh, parting thoughts as we wrap up. Um, Garab, your question on DAOs. Um, <laughs> Vitalik Buterin said in 2014, DAOs, what are DAOs? Automation at the center, humans at the edges. And when it comes to crypto oasis, I think with Saka and others, the humans are in the center, not the edges, right? Dubai is about humans in the middle, not yeah. automation in the middle. And then the second one is do download the report. Um, and if you do, make sure you get to page 262, right, Saka? <laughs> That's the most important one in the entire report, right? Oh, come it? on, guys. Come on. Page, I think it's page 262. I hope it what is. Are we, what are we cherry picking? Come on, confess to our listeners. That is it's the, the, it's the two page, it's a page or two page summary of, of my big tokenization report, which is 360 <laughs> pages, ah, not 290. I feel left out now. Summarized. Party. Summarized. Into, brother. Come on, man. Summarized into come four on. or five paragraphs. So there you are. So oh, download the Crypto Oasis now. report and download the tokenization report. Put it into your search engine of choice. Gosh, G-H-O-S-E, tokenization. <laughs> thank you. Allow me to thank the both of you for hosting me and, you know, for constantly uh, supporting our mission. You know, we really believe that this is a team sport. You know, when you say there's more that, that are going to be inspired, I really hope so. Um, mm. This space is nascent. Um, the pie is big enough for all of us to eat. So I really look forward to collaborating with both of you and the wider audience that's listening in the future. Um, we are easy to find. Come find us. Join one of our meetups. And uh, and yeah, I look forward to speaking to you then again in October because that's when we're releasing the next version. Uh, actually, let's, Sucker, you should... Let's grow the pie. Know. Let's grow the pie. Let's not eat too many pies, but let's grow the pie. But Sucker, you should tell everyone, where are the meetups? People should know. Okay, cool. Uh, look, I, I, I love, uh, I love uh, uh, marketing the own uh, brand, but you know, I, I didn't want it to be like that. But yeah, so every week, every week um, on at fr on Friday, uh, six p.m. onwards, we are at a place called Social District on the Palm Jumeirah. Every second week, um, we are at the Theater of Digital Art for Art Talks, and then um, every quarter we do very large and cool events. Um, for, for our community. So I look forward to welcoming anyone that's listening, but particularly the two of you there soon. Looking forward to it. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank, Thank you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.